guys, this is Tom Burker from Car Revs Daily in the 2016 Infiniti Q70L. So we're out for our first drive review today. <laughs> and I uh, want to showcase this car. Some incredible speed, superb powertrain, and uh, 0 to 60 sprints of 4.7 seconds. It's an awesome analog and pure type of drive experience for a super sports sedan or rocket ship limo as I've been calling it. Uh, and really sets itself apart from its rivals like the Mercedes-Benz CLS, Audi S6, BMW, um, uh, perhaps 650i Grand Coupe, and the Lexus GS um, in how sort of pure and um, really just uh, focused the handling experience is. So we're running the, the Q70L with the largest um, engine ever in a production Japanese vehicle. This is a 5.6 liter. 32 valve uh, V8 making 416 horsepower and 414 foot-pounds of torque. So this engine really, really flies. It's a, it's a gem in the QX80 um, and also in um, in the new Nissan Pathfinder. But it is, has its highest state of tune and up to 416 horsepower, 414 foot-pounds of torque in this Infiniti Q70. So what does that really deliver for drivers? A ton of performance and speed, basically. Uh, this car hauls, hauls ass, um, and does it really effortlessly. It's um, it really has that massive sort of uh, fat cat fu type V8 power and feel, in that you can hum along um, using you know a tenth of its power and still be one of the quickest cars on the road. But when the need arises, I mean, this vehicle absolutely flies, flies. Very, very confidence-inspiring steering, um, braking feel, especially on this uh, particular car, which has the 20-inch sport wheels and um, four piston calipers in the front and two piston brake calipers in the rear um, that really give an awesome brake feel and um, a real driving confidence when paired with this giant motor. So, the Q70L, uh, let's talk about a couple things, um, like where it fits in the marketplace, which I guess we already covered, sort of in the CLS type of uh, type of ballpark, um, but with with the back seat of an S-Class or a 7 Series. This Q70L, the L standing for long, um, really does add about a half a foot back there um, in pure legroom and uh, doesn't really spoil the style. It doesn't look like a long wheelbase special. Still has these sort of feline S curves um, and bulges and, uh, and shaping to its sheet metal all around. Um, delightfully in the hood, as you may be able to see on the video but um, really continues as a theme throughout. A supreme elegance in the nose. I really, really like this uh, the new Infinity face, which is that um, ultra chiseled jawline and sort of a double wave, uh, double wave crest of, um, of inner grill work. It's just very, very chic. Um, it's sort of uh, understated, but also extremely classy and unique on the road. So that uh, pairs up front with, uh, with gorgeous uh, sort of like cat's eye LEDs around the um, LED projector beams that handle low and high beam duties um, and also has full LED suite for the fog lamps, um, indicators front and rear, and, um, and virtually everything else. So really, really a shapely, stylish sedan that, um, that belies the fact that it has you know, an enormous, enormous back seat um, on the road. It definitely doesn't look stretched and just brings some of those uh, sort of S-Class type um, comfort advantages without having all of that price and all that width. So, um, really, really loving that. Um, the next thing I obviously want to touch on is the drive experience. And why me saying that it's like analog and pure is really, really a good thing versus, uh, versus some of its rivals. And then we'll close out the review uh, by talking about some of the options that this particular test car has and uh, what we think about them. And then, of course, go over pricing. So, Q70L really just nails the fundamentals so hard that it's impossible not to love its drive character. It is just... A, an absolute devour, a mile killer. It devours the miles in front of you with um, with confidence. Uh, real, really meaty steering. Um, nice floor mounted throttle, and of course, as we mentioned, you know, extremely active, extremely helpful braking power um, with synchro rev match um, as you are in braking mode especially prominent in the sport drive mode that we're in. We have normal, sport, uh, eco, and snow. Sport is gonna be the most satisfying on roads like this, but um, snow and eco are helpful as well for the, their various, you know, in other conditions. In traffic, the eco mode is actually really nice. It smooths things out very nicely. Oh, and then normal, of course, just does it all and adapts dynamically to, uh, to how you're driving. 
So that's all really good, but um, the thing that sets Infinity apart versus um, like the S6, I'm thinking in particular, um, the BMW 650 Grand Coupe, and even the Lexus GS um, and GSF to a certain extent, um, is the way that this car just is so obedient and involves you so, so heavily in the drive experience. There's really no sense of sort of like being a passenger or, um, or uh, playing, taking part in some kind of like video game drive experience, I guess it's sort of a cliche, but um, it, it's not like that at all in the Q70L. You definitely are front and center to all the action, and there's not a, a huge amount of, um, of processing power keeping you away from the fun and, um, and sort of managing things on your behalf like the latest Germans do. You know, and that stuff can become really, really tedious. I mean, granted, like after six months with a BMW, you're going to learn like how its systems work and, and how to uh, best use them to your advantage. But in general, they're always sort of very active and you never really know what the limits of the car are versus what the computer has set the limits as for that particular day. It's just always sort of like a mystery black box. Whereas the Q70L is really just sort of fiercely loyal and ready to do whatever you want, whatever you ask of it, without too much second thought or second guessing um, of your motives. And that extends, um, you know, for the full drive experience, but um, really, really impacts the, uh, the, the drive on hard throttle, especially nicely. So um, it just becomes a, a, just a faithful, pure, a delightful car to flog along um, or sort of just cruise along smooth and smoothly and silently. The second um, part of that coin is that uh, the Infiniti Q70L really doesn't overwhelm its driver with like with befuddling technology and um, sort of beta tester status um, like Mercedes, uh, Audi, and BMW definitely subject their highest dollar customers to. I mean, those systems, oh, good, still recording. Those systems in the BMWs, I mean, it even starts with just the gear lever. I mean, it's just perplexing um, in a way that's not necessary and is, is really, um, fairly unhelpful in the fact that after a few years in the 7 Series or, or S-Class, for example, that technology may or may not be adopted down the range. The goal, of, of course, is to introduce these expensive modern technologies in the highest level vehicles and then um, sort of sort out the, the bugs and the, um, the glitches in, uh, in time for them to be rolled out down the range entirely. But with the S-Class in particular, a lot of that technology has not made it all the way down because it's so disliked that that it's really just not viable for um, even the premium mass market. So, Infinity avoids that little trap by, um, by sticking to, of course, just a standard gear lever um, with, um, with minimal sort of uh, uh, minimal nannying and very clear buttons, clear systems integration, very easy to use the nav versus, you know, status and settings and what have you. All the while enjoying a 416 horsepower 5.6 liter V8, rocketing you to 60 in, uh, in less than five seconds. 4.7 to 4.8 seconds are the times for this vehicle to 60 miles an hour. Um, in in all-wheel drive is, the, is supposedly the quickest at 4.7, and the rear-wheel drive car like we're in now, um, coming in at 4.8, just slow, you know a tick behind, uh, thanks to a little bit less grip off the line. Overall, though, the um, the vehicle is just is not. Uh, there's no sort of woolly blanket feel between you and its um, its sporting character. The car is ready to go and um, and dynamite from from the word go. So that's really really unique versus these um, these like two high tech rivals that are trying so hard to to one up each other in terms of the German big three luxury marks um, and to a lesser extent Jaguar and Land Rover in that little fold these days. They're trying so hard to one up each other with these little technical gugas that they really sort of miss the whole point of driving you know a, a badass luxury limo which is you just want it to, to do everything you say all the time, right now, you know? <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah, what's wrong? What's, hold, what's the holdup? I mean, that's the whole point of, of, um, of shelling out 70 grand for, um, for a car with sports car performance, but a limo-like backseat. Woo, that, of course, being able to pass people on a whim like that. So, um, you know, the Q70L is, is, uh, is delightfully pure and analog in those senses. So those are my words of the day. Uh, also, like ruthless force and um, just a just a, a delightful steer. Feels meaty, but never overly heavy around corners. It feels like it has tremendous grip and a very very faithful, um, involved sort of for uh, involved suspension all around that uh, definitely works well together front and rear. You can just tell that this car was designed from a from a performance perspective 
before any of any other considerations sort of got into the mix like you know tech or, or weird materials in the chassis or you know a key fob that has to be plugged in every week or you know like little stuff that um that some of the german rivals of this infinity q70l are going for um all out are really just sort of are not um are not something you have to deal with in the q70l so that being said there are a couple downsides to its um to its tech minimalism um, the main being that, uh, that there's just some features that feel fairly antiquated. Uh, the mid, the mid cluster is the one that I'm pointing dead at right now. Um, literally and metaphorically, this mid cluster is super, super old fashioned. and just has like one button to switch between the, the displays, um, is a one color dot matrix screen and, um, and shows like fairly minimal information in general. The other um, slightly shocking missing element um, are paddle shifters, which I think are included on the Q70S, but not this uh, Q70 or Q70L variant. Um, even so, it's very, very nice to have those. I mean, in a, in a day where where um, the Chevrolet Volt has a downshift paddle and uh, the, some RAV4s are coming with shift paddles, I mean, it's kind of, the time has come for, uh, for Infinity to include that element as well, um, even if they are going for sort of a, a tech minimalist um, aesthetic and experience. So from that, from that perspective, there are some, some things in the Q70 that are not as awesome as I'd like them to be. That, um, that does extend regretfully to the um, price list, which includes a $7,200 option pack for, um, for, for the active safety systems, which is like a whole suite of stuff. I mean, it's like, it's uh, a better around view monitor, sonar at all four corners, um, adaptive cruise, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, forward collision alert, blind spot monitoring system, rear cross traffic alert. I mean, you name it, it, it almost has it on this car. The problem is the systems are not um, are not as great as they are on some rivals, even from mainstream brands these days. In terms of the lane keep assist, I mean, you're halfway in the other lane before it starts like oddly nudging you back into the lane where you'd want to be. Whereas for me to have confidence using a system like that, it's really got to pick up like right away. I mean, the moment you cross the lane line, it needs to be on it. Whereas this one just feels a little bit Yestertech in, um, in its responsiveness. Um, also took a couple days to get the beeping to subside. This car loves to beep at you and remind you um, of various, uh, you know, of obstructions that it may see ahead or um, you deviating from the, the lane path, um, pre-collision stuff. I mean, there's a lot of beeping and bonging going on. Luckily, you can turn the vast majority of it off. So that's pretty nice. But um, the, the main way to turn all of that off would be to skip the, uh, the $7,000 um, tech package. I don't know, what is the actual name of this package? deluxe technology package yeah i would just skip it i would skip it and if you're going for the purest drive experience um, of a rocket ship limo you don't need that stuff um, and and if anything you may be happier without it there are a couple uh, omissions that you might miss like the active uh, forward lighting system which uh which uh, shifts the projector balls around corners uh, in kind of a nice and, and cool and helpful way um, and then the uh, the 18 speaker stereo system upgrade from a standard 10 speaker Bose two channel um, audio system. So there's stuff that you might miss, but really um, I would just uh, just pocket that cash and you'll be a very happy camper. Pricing for the Q70L. Um, now this is like the, one of the most mo loaded most loaded models in the range. So it starts from 64.5 uh, before options, and then our test car with that 7,000 in tech stuff and uh, and remarkably great value of $1,100 sport 20 inch wheels and, um, and sport brakes um, as well and then like a $400 charge for uh, illuminated sill plates is up to about $75,000 out the door so superb machine and definitely um, coming in $12,000, $15,000 less than the GSF um, and a similar amount uh, lower than the S6, about $25,000 less than the CLS with a comparable powertrain um, and overall just, uh, just going to be more affordable than some of those rivals. So um, that's all good and uh, that's all great for, for buyers who really want sort of just like all, they want it all. They want S-Class backseat you know, uh, M5 performance and, um, you know, LS460 reliability and, uh, and smooth, quiet ride on the road. So you've really got um, a nice triple threat here in that regard, but the, the Q70L does leave, leave some, some drivers wanting for, um, if they are gonna have those tech solutions like the active cruise and stuff, you want the best one on the market, not one that was sort of frozen in, um, 
you know, perhaps 2011 or something in its effectiveness. Like it really jumps on the brakes in the active cruise, for example. It's it's uh, it's just sort of it's a little bit too nervous with um, with the forward collision warnings. The lane keep assist, as mentioned, is um, is really janky and not super confidence inspiring. Um, and then you have just little things like uh, the button fest here and the um, one color limited info mid cluster. But beyond that, I mean, it's really, really hard to fault the vehicle because when you think of the buyer as somebody who is like a, maybe not a tech avoider, but certainly doesn't want to be an alpha or beta tester on um, these new technologies, which is certainly something that is not optional on any 7 Series. I mean, you, you, that's you. You're it. You're it. And whether it's sending data back to BMW or not um, is irrelevant because um, you have to like live with or suffer through sort of the tech machinations of, um, of an everyday uh, undercooked system. So the, the Infinity definitely avoids that while, while keeping a lot of on-road panache, um, exceptional levels of refinement and comfort. And, um, and as we've seen, I mean, just ruthless sort of uh, mind-bending acceleration and, uh, and handling feel. I'm a huge fan. One thing I don't like, listen to this. So I've got the cooled seats on, which is great. But so I couldn't figure out why the car was growling all the time. And it's the climate control. The climate control is really, really loud. Even on its lowest fan setting, it's really loud um, and irritating. And I don't know if that's just the nature of the, the fans or the systems they're using. I've tried everything I can to, to make it stop growling. <laughs> I even thought it was like perhaps a, a synthetic sound port to give, a, to give the engine a little bit more of a sporting character. But um, I'm now thinking that it's just the fans and the noise that they make which is unfortunate because with the it encourages you to have the climate control off altogether but that's not really an option when it's 100 degrees out boiling hot sun it would be a little nicer if all the windows were tinted on this car but uh, of course that's something you can do uh, on an accessory basis from a dealer or an aftermarket basis from like a, a car uh, boutique but um in general if those are the biggest gripes you can find about a car it's a pretty good car, and this one certainly is. Awesome seats, great drive position, enormous back seat, um, ferocious power, awesome seven-speed automatic.